Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. We have an amazing guest today. We met at the Glendale uh, Unified School District. Yes. And this guy knows his stuff. Yeah, his name is Jordan Henry. Oh, by the way, I'm Ethan. This is Suisha. And we have a special guest. Yeah, so I'm Jordan Henry. I live in Glendale, California. I'm running for school board in Glendale Unified, um, mainly because I've got two little boys a uh, four-year-old and a one-year-old. And I've been following the left turn in education for about seven years now, mm. um, way before I had children. Mm -hmm. oh. And um, I've just, the only thing that we can possibly do is to bring this out in public, talk about what's going on with gender ideology, uh, Marxism in the schools, mm -hmm and then run for office and change it from within. That is, the, that is the only way that we can work this situation out. So I'm running for school board in Glendale. Oh, what makes you want to stand up like to fight for your children and everything? Because I know a lot of parents, they're just like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. The government's mm -hmm. the government. Uh, sex edu education is not so bad. A lot of our viewers think that we are exaggerating the oh. situation right now. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit what is really happening? Yeah. Yeah. So sex education, first of all, I don't have a, many issues with a, a public institution talking about biological sex, procreation. Um, what I have problems with, and this is what this is, this is what's happening in the schools, um, is where they actually will sexualize the content. They will you know, talk about adults that, you know, their sexual proclivities, their sexual attractions. We have a lot of examples of this. And if you want me to get detailed, I'm happy to. But one specific example is transgenderism in the schools. And so this is just beyond normal sexual relationships. We're talking about like the fundamental identity mm. of a child. And we have a superintendent in our district who, on the record, has stated that six-year-olds can change genders. They will change their names, their pronouns, what bathrooms they use, what locker rooms they use, who they're changing in front of, other students, other teachers, uh, like a coach, for instance. And they won't tell parents about it. They will conceal that information from parents. And that, to me, is... Uh, unethical. I think it violates the Constitution mm -hmm. because they're using the Constitution and they're using yes. a perversion of their of how to interpret it. It's it's wrong how they're interpreting it in, in order to justify this. Um, so yeah, the, the fact that they're hiding this information from children is horrific and it has to stop. And to answer your first question, why am I speaking out? I have no fear when I'm speaking about my own, my own rights within an American con constitutional republic. I have no fear because mm -hmm. I, my rights are protected, my God-given rights. Yes. Um, there's, in, in my opinion, it's my duty to do that. My grandfather, who actually just died four days ago, he was 100 years old. He fought in World War II. He was risking his life as a paratrooper um, in Japan. I, I have absolute respect for him and what he did. If he's going to risk, if he risked his life to protect our country and survive mm -hmm. that conflict, like w w if I just have to speak, I have no problem with that. That's my example. You know, this <laughs> that's is a great, <laughs> that's a great example. Yeah, if I if I if I just have to speak and exercise my first amendment rights mm -hmm. Mm. not a problem I, I no one should be afraid of that considering what's going on and it's our duty to do that yeah uh, uh you said you've been following this whole uh leftist turn the marxist uh turn yeah for seven years yeah and now uh, from what i understand is glendale it, it used to be a very conservative county and uh most people are Orthodox Christians, and uh, everyone has a religion. Uh, you you lived there all your life, right? No, 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 no. no. I moved okay. to Glendale in twenty twenty one. 
Oh, okay. Pretty recently, yeah. Oh, wow. So I lived in Los Angeles for 10 years before that. Mm. Um, and as an adult, I went back to college to get a master's degree in landscape architecture from Cal Poly Pomona, pretty close to where we are right now. And while I was in school, they had us read educational theory. And it was Marxist. It was quoting Mao. It was quoting... Wait, how, how long ago was this? This was 2017. 2017? Oh, oh I, okay. I just graduated that year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, from college? Uh, master's degree. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was just starting my master's then, and yeah. they had us read book a book, specifically an education educational theory in landscape architecture. So I thought I was learning about trees, soil, yeah. irrigation. <laughs> no. I was I, they they immediately dunked in or put inserted Marxist educational theory, and it's this Brazilian Marxist named Paulo Freire, P A U L O F R E I R E Paulo Freire. Mm -hmm. He is a a liberation theologist. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of this term? Mm -hmm. It's Marxist Christianity, specifically through the Catholic. Church. Mm -mm -mm. It was propped up by the World Council of Churches. That's a Rockefeller-supported uh, institution in Geneva, Switzerland. The UN, the United Nations, plucked him out of Chile when he was extradited. I'm sorry, when he was exiled from Brazil when the military took over. Oh, okay. The CIA essentially, the American CIA essentially propped up the military in Brazil. And they kicked out all the Marxists. And there was 20 years of military rule in Brazil. So they kicked out Paulo Freire. He went to Chile. The United Nations picked him up and funded him to go to Geneva, Switzerland, and to work at the World Council of Churches and bring in Marxism into world religion. Um, and it's like a Gnostic faith. Have you ever heard that term, Gnostic? Like early Christians, the early Christian sects. Where they, you know, it was a perversion of Christianity from very early on. Well, yeah. that's resurfacing now in the 20, 20th and 21st century. Yes. Um, uh, and Marxism has always been about Gnosticism. Marxism has always been about a perversion of faith mm -hmm. and an inversion of morality and faith. And my introduction to all of this was going to landscape architecture school. <laughs> reading educational theory. I couldn't believe what I was reading actually. <laughs> and I was just very intrigued by it. At the time I was at the time I was an atheist. Uh -huh. oh. At the time I was an atheist. Okay. And the more I read, and I just had to keep reading because I was like, why are we reading a book that's quoting Mao and Lenin and and Castro and Guevara and Lukács, a Hungarian Marxist, and Hegel and Marx himself, he's quoting all of these people. I had to learn way more. So I just kept on researching it, even though it had nothing to do with my field. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just basically, I got a master's in landscape architecture, but really I got a master's in so Marxist, <laughs> Marxist educational theory. But I went at it on my own and I researched it on my own and I ended up reading, you know, criticisms, criticisms of Marxism and of thought reform in China, atrocities in Russia, you know. And then learning and then reading Marxist theory deeply and how it has morphed into education and identity politics and a sexuality. Okay. So these things are real. The Paulo Freire is the most influential cited source in education currently. Okay. If you just go to Google Scholar and search for, um, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, his number one book. You will see, I mean, it's 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 cited you know thousands and thousands of times. And, and our ed, schools are actually using these kind of things. Every teacher or educator with an advanced degree since 1990, for sure, has read Paulo Freire, okay. has read Marxist theory. Every one of them. So the 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 entire educational system in North America has been completely usurped, overran by Marxists. Wow. Yeah. And do you think there's a, right now all these sexualizing the children oh, yeah. and then the brainwashing, the, even the parents, yes. have something to do with 
uh, turning America into a Maoist country, basically. Yeah, um, and you know, Marxism takes on different contexts. Mm -hmm. That's how it functions. The if you go below Marxism, though, like I was saying before, it is a Gnostic faith, meaning we are, in short, we are imprisoned by God here on Earth, uh -huh. and God is this creature called the Demiurge, mm -hmm. which is, I think, most. Uh, Christians would disagree with that. We're actually blessed to be here, and this is a gift to be here, and this is part of God's plan. Um, uh, and Gnostics, you know, believe that there is a, a light bringer who Christians would call Lucifer, mm -hmm. uh, that is, you know, was sent here, a fallen angel, to basically save us yeah. from the imprisoned state that God has put us in. Apply that to gender. We were born in bodies. Uh, these bodies are assigned to us at birth. And let's, let's take it really local here because at Glendale Unified, there's a health book in the ninth grade which states explicitly that sex is a legal status assigned to you at birth on your birth certificate. It's not biological and it's certainly not part of God's plan or, you know, you being... Uh, shaped in the image of God. No, it is a purely a le sex is a legal status. And that is in a ninth grade health book. I'm quoting the book right now. That right there is an element of Gnosticism as it's applied to K through 12 education. Y you are not assigned your sex at birth. That is innate. That is for 99.999% of the population. Obviously there are exceptions and there are genetic malfunctions there are intersex people who have biologically, who are biologically sterilized because their the, their chromosomes didn't actually form correctly, and that's tragic, and they have to deal with that the rest of their lives. But that's that is not transgenderism. Transgenderism is where the person, the child in this case, with consent of the government, is allowed to basically assume whatever role or identity they want. And the school then has to affirm that. The school then has to um, enforce that. They have to enforce your speech code. Mm -hmm. And this is where the Marxism comes in. This is where the authoritarianism comes in. So Marxism is all about negation of norms and of structures. It has nothing to do with the capitalist theory. The capitalist theory is a tool. Yeah. The... Uh, the gender identity is just a tool to negate social norms, to negate stability, to tear down this social imprisoned fabric. state that we're in. Yes. yes. It, is, it is a theological um, attack on normalcy, stability, family, God. Fundamentally, that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, I actually read the book. It's called uh, Marxism the Devil or something. It's mm. written by this uh, Catholic uh, priest. And that's what he says too. It was like everything he wrote, he used fake status just to prove that uh, there's no God, and then uh, we we need to we 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 need to build a society that make the wh whoever is in power God, mm -hmm. the, the 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 idea the ideology a God. Uh, yeah, society itself is God. Yeah. It's a total faith in man. Yeah. Um, and he actually, you know, he talks about God and about like the existence of God. Marx does, but he says, "You fools, you're questioning. You're, you're, the framing of your question is wrong." Yeah, because he's coming at it from God being us. Like, of course, uh, it doesn't even matter if there's God or not. The existence to him doesn't matter. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a completely nihilistic point of view to the core. He's not even like saying that God doesn't exist. He's saying you're so stupid for even asking it. Yeah. Think about it. The guy got baptized twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's born a Jew. Was he baptized Skin. into Christianity? Uh, I Is think that... uh, Orthodoxy and then uh, Protestant. Oh. His, his dad changed religions twice. So, oh, I didn't uh, even I read, know. Yeah, yeah, wow. I, I, I read the book, so that, that's, uh, hmm. that's what I read. And let, let's talk about... Glendale uh, Unified School District. Yeah. yeah, you were there, mm -hmm. and 
we saw those uh, school board member. They are just up there. Do you think they're actually listening to the parents? And then like, like the, when we go there and protest, basically, do you think that will work? That that is working right now? They're, they're scared. You're scared? They're scared? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they hear us. They're aware. They're worried about elections on one level. But they're really worried about um, their status within their little circle. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the Democratic Party. I'm talking about the teachers' union. Um, they, they're towing the line. I know for a fact that some of those school board members agree with us. Oh, okay. For a fact. Which one? The, 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 the one that you point out, like Jennifer? Oh, one? no, I think she's a real believer. She, she does not agree with us. Okay. Oh. She is fully on board. <laughs> she is fully on board. I think Jennifer is fully on board. But I believe, based on what I've been told from firsthand accounts, so this is one degree of separation that Nairi Nahabidian disagrees with what's going on in the schools. I believe that Shant Sahakian also disagrees, but they're cowards. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. They fear man over God. Mm -hmm. They fear the party. Yes. The regime. And they know what's coming if they, you know, step out of line. Uh -huh. They are unfortunately perpetuating authoritarianism yeah. they're allowing authoritarians to take over and they're part of it this is and they'll get they'll get used and thrown off and cast off just like every authoritarian regime has always done they're the first ones to get their fodder they're just yeah. tools mm -hmm. so uh those two i believe have some sympathy mm -hmm. um and i think if we had more people on the board like if i win and uh, there's another woman running in our in another district mm -hmm. in glendale named Aneta Karpekian. Karpekian. Um, she, if she, she and I win, I think we could flip at least one of those people on the board. Okay. Well, Nairi's term is up, so she won't be on the board because Aneta is going to win. So we just need to flip one person. So if we can flip Shant, that would be great. That's our goal, you know. And then in two more years, in 2026, we'll have another election. We'll try to get a majority on there. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That's a very good strategy. Yeah, it's the only strategy we have. Other than recalls, we just have to win elections. Yeah, I mean because he's really doing it. Yeah. Or like people always complaining about the like school district, but people always like put everything on their mouth. They don't really do anything, you know. Yeah, <laughs> my grandpa almost died. It's the least I can do. I'm literally just trying to live up to what previous Americans have always been doing for freedom. Yes. Fight for what's right. Yeah, fight against tyranny. Mm. This is America. This is what we have to do. Mm. And I cannot look back on my life in the future and say I did nothing. In fact, I have to do everything I possibly can. And I kind of feel like I'm always failing at that because it's just feel it feels overwhelming because it's a regime. Um, and there's you're just we're up against a lot right now. In California, especially, like look at Chino Valley. If your if your viewers are not aware, oh. you we, guys talk about these issues. Yeah, we yes. were there. Oh, you were. Yeah, oh, we great. were there. Good we were you, there uh, doing the protest. And so that's, yeah, that's actually the next question is uh, for you is because Chino Valley they they, they just uh, got sued. I think a lot of school board member in Glendale will uh, be scared of that too because governor is like uh, up there. Democratic. Of course, they're scared. Yeah. yeah. How, Everyone's how you, scared. How are you gonna fight that? Like, can, can you give, like, encourage them to stay with you? Because right now, I think the biggest problem is, is everything is controlled by the Democrat and everything yeah. is controlled by the leftists. And even when Republican got into office, they're like, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to do anything. I'm not gonna oh, do anything. It's right? Like yeah. That. I think those those times are over. I mean, we have to just act. Yeah. We have to consistently act, and we have to get things on the agenda and get votes recorded. And this is my whole approach. Anytime we actually lose, like let's say we put up a parental notification policy in Glendale and we lose. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Obviously I want to win, but if it loses, we get that vote on the record and we can then campaign on that. This person voted against parental notification. They do not want, and obviously I know how they're going to vote because these people are very predictable. Um, they do not want parents to be involved with the privacy of their own children. They want to conceal that from conservatives, from Christians, 
And honestly, from a lot of like immigrants, mm. minorities, a lot of people, I mean, this, this is unfortunately, a, demographically, this is a white liberal agenda. Mm-hmm. And a lot of immigrants completely disagree with this because they come from, they came here just to have a normal working life, a normal family, grounded, f- grounded uh, uh, home life, you know, mm-hmm. stability. And so I think that they're going to, we just have to keep going. We just have to keep putting the message out and waking people up one by one, mm-hmm. social media, knocking on doors, running for office, getting our name out there, getting our message out there and y- using all of this to actually like refocus on education too, because we have lost track of just fundamental necessities of education in California. Like our schools are failing. Mm-hmm. while they're trying to spend all this money on you know Sex radicalized education. indoctrination you know so if we just focus on uh getting back to the basics you know right now like you can't even get to in glendale you cannot get to calculus without taking summer school you absolutely have to go out of your out of your way to do it that to me that's unacceptable I mean, we are we have failing math scores it's it's something like 52% are passing math proficiency levels and that's after they've already lowered the standards and the expectations and then we're even we're dumbing it down even even more so to to me we need to focus on like getting that word out like we are we have lost we have lost our priority on just educating our children and competing with other countries in the 21st century um and we're inserting ideologies yeah and that's just going to make our traditional education get worse mm-hmm. while while they while the division in the community just gets worse too. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole point of this is actually just to divide the community. Mm-hmm. The whole point is to distract the community, to make us to make us hate our neighbors. Do do, do you have any example of what uh, what they're teaching yeah. our, our kids right now? Like what what are what are the curriculum and the textbook that they're using oh yeah 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 Yeah, so i uh i told you that one example from the health book saying what defining that sex is just a legal status on a birth certificate they also um here i've got another example here i've got a lot of examples i mean it's kind of crazy this is uh the next page on that health book it says an intersex person person so intersex is like a real medical condition it's like a real thing and it's a real small portion of the population, mm-hmm. their chromosomes don't form, and they uh, have like portions of both genitalia, mm-hmm. and they are sterile. They cannot mm-hmm. reproduce, okay? No. Yeah. And that is a biological reality already covered, and everybody's accepted this, but it's, it's not normal. It's not anything to define men and women on. It's the exception, you know, and it's like a deformity. Yeah. But this one, this says an intersex person with female external organs may be raised as a female, but later in life, she may feel she is male, regardless of her anatomy or chromosomes. She may choose to identify herself as male and assume the role and behaviors associated with males. And this person is considered to be transgender. So they have, they have conflated. This is a health book. This is an official ninth grade health book and they've conflated intersex with transgender Mm. so they've conflated sex with gender and gender is pretty much like for most of the population 99 percent of the population more is in line with their biological sex so they've and there are exceptions i don't even care about the exceptions because we're defining all of our laws now based on the exceptions and that should not be the case yeah um so they've conflated sex and gender, and now they're conflating intersex with transgender, so a biological anomaly with a chosen path in life, which you know has all these medical interventions and social transitioning and change of language and forced change of language with name and pronoun, change of facility. They have completely conflated these things just to confuse people. Mm. It's confusing, isn't it? Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, yeah. th- this is just a... in my. I don't know who wrote this book, where the funding came from, yeah. why they purchased this, who teaches this, but this is their ninth grade textbook in all of Glendale schools. 
It says transgender people strongly feel that their gender is the opposite of their biological anatomical sex. So they contradicted themselves because in one sentence, sex is just a legal status on a birth certificate. Mm. But here it is. Oh, it's contrary to their biological sex. So they are affirming biological sex. Uh-huh. But in the same yeah. in the same moment, they're also saying that um, you know, boys are girls. Trans trans girls are girls, even though they're biological boys. So there's that. That's that's a real um part of the curriculum. Um another and what that actually turns into at the policy level mm-hmm. is there's an elementary school in La Crescenta called yeah. Valley View Elementary. That's actually my home elementary school. If my kids enroll, they will go to Valley View. And there was an there was a field trip that they took in 2022. So last year they went to Catalina Island mm. Elementary School. Okay. Two boys, biological boys, slept with the girls because they claimed to be girls. And the email that was sent from the principal to the superintendent, the one I was talking about before, her name, the, the Kelly King. Kelly King. Yeah. Great. I'm glad <laughs> you know. I love that you know who Kelly King. Is. Yeah. <laughs> we were translating your the yeah. meeting, and we oh. saw. Yeah, it was yeah. great. I was putting on the subtitle. Good. Yeah. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. I love. I love that you're translating meetings. That's awesome. So Kelly King said, "No, you cannot tell parents." That these two boys are sleeping with girls on this field trip. And using bathrooms, using showers, we cannot tell anybody. So they are invading all of these children's privacy, all of the parents' privacy. The parents have a reasonable expectation. They have a constitutional expectation that the government will be transparent with them. These are their tax dollars. They're paying these teachers. But these teachers and the admin are actively hiding this information from them yeah. they will not tell parents that there are little boys sleeping with little girls mm. why do on tax-funded why do you trips. think that is why do you think the schools is trying to help the democrat party or, or or just the government this is well first of all i don't even think this is maybe this is the democratic party i think yeah. it's a, a parasite within the democratic party uh-huh, that's uh-huh. completely taken over yeah okay. and liberalism has gotten so open-minded, they're now oblivious to their own constitutional rights. Uh They have allowed the parasite to take over the Democratic Party, and they're just going with it. They've been brainwashed. They've been brainwashed. I mean, and in Maoist China, that term came from Maoism, from washing brain. That's literally what thought reform is. Yes. Mao mastered that. And... Freire quote Paulo Freire quotes Mao repeatedly. He's a Maoist, mm. and this guy is so influential in education. So the, the that is the 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 lineage that we're dealing with here. Mm. The unions, the 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 Marxists, they realize, oh, we can't be we can't be militant revolutionaries anymore because it failed. We killed a hundred million people in the Eastern Hemisphere. Uh huh. <laughs> Tragically. Yes. We can't do that anymore. We have to reform our own dialectical, our, our own Marxist approach. Our, our materialist dialectical historicism to be... If anybody knows Marxism, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so they reform that into the educational schools. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is what they're doing. The, the goal is to negate society, negate hierarchy. Okay. Freire writes it explicitly. His version of truth, and I'm, these are his words, I'm quoting Paulo Freire, the Marxist. True generosity must negate hierarchy. And he starts with the teacher and the, and the learner. The teacher and the learner. It's all about teaching and learning and how we need to flip that norm or negate all power between them. So the teacher has no ability to counter or to lead a class of students. The students are leading the class and teaching just as much as the teacher. So in terms of child, a child's privacy rights like the con- that are enshrined in the Constitution, the child does have privacy rights from the government. Mm-hmm. But the government is now saying, oh, no, 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 your privacy rights are from your own parents. 
and the government is going to protect your privacy from your own parents. That's an inversion to negate hierarchy. Yes. You see, you, you see it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is exactly what they're doing. That is the complete mission is just to tear it down. Mm-hmm. To tear, it, to tear down the normalcy of society, mm-hmm. the expectations of society, mm-hmm. to be a woman in a woman's body, a man in a man's body. That is their goal. And, you know, this is another book. Uh, it's called Who Are You? This is in elementary schools in Glendale Unified. Right now. Right now. Okay. Right now. Um, this book is certainly in all of them, and it was donated by Gender Nation. So this is a nonprofit, <laughs> and I, I could just read it to you. Um, but you know, it's all gender ideology. Right. Oh, a note for the grown-ups: People experience gender in so many ways. Some grown-ups may worry that children are too young to talk about gender diversity. No one's too young to talk about gender change, and it real. This is a manipulative book. Um, so this is a story about you. The important thing to remember is that you are the one who knows best, who knows you best. Not your parents, yeah. not God, not society. No, no, no. You know you best. Yeah. It's like, all about you. Me, me, yeah. me, me, me. Me, 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 me. I just heard yeah. the same commercial from uh, Wix.com. Wix.com oh, just really? do a commercial like you know you best and uh, you you know you best and yeah. then uh, the world need you and it's like the hell and in a sense I agree with it this is the manipulation they take a truth a kernel of truth like for me it's like oh live and let live you know I don't want the government getting involved yeah. I don't care what you yeah. do in your private life I really don't care mm. and in fact. I support you to do whatever you want to do in your private life. Yeah. You may pay consequences. You yeah. may never realize that you're suffering from your 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 beliefs and your activities. It doesn't matter to me. I'm, fo- I'm, I'm focusing on my private life, what I want to do. Leave me alone. Yeah. Live and let live. Kernel of truth. And then they manipulate it. Okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, yeah, you do you do know you best. Yeah. And but your whole, in my opinion, your whole role in life is to understand how you can better serve God and your community, and that is you. But they want it to end there, and they want to basically get a certain percentage of the mm. population sterilized, yeah, with puberty blockers and hormone therapy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when babies are born, people ask, "Is it a boy or is it a girl?" Babies can't talk, so grown-ups make a guess by looking at their bodies. They just guess when they see a penis or a vagina. Oh. They just guess. I mean, you can tell sex just from a blood test with 100% accuracy before you can even see genitalia on, a, on an ultrasound scan. Yeah. This is hard biology, you know? So this is the sex assigned to you at birth, just like in that health book, male or female. But sometimes people get this confused with gender, mm-hmm. just like that book did, actually. But gender is much more than the body you were born with. As babies grow into kids, they start to know what they look like and don't, or what they like and what they don't like. And this is your personal expression, what you like, how you dress, and how you act. So they're taking this nugget of freedom, Mm. of liberty, Mm -hmm. and they're just going to run with that to the most extreme level. There are so many ways to express yourself. What you like can change as you grow up or even from day to day. What you like can change from day to day. Now, this is where it's really manipulative. This is, can, I hope you guys can see this. This is a bookshelf with toys. Yeah. What do you like? Oh, I bet you like this kitty stuffed animal or these blocks or a guitar, maybe this, this little rocking horse or a dog. You like those things, don't you? Oh, what else do you like? Do you like a dress? See, they're easing you into it. This is grooming. This is psychological grooming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. We, I don't I have to call it sexualized grooming because it's I mean it is because yeah. they're talking about gender identity yeah. but this is manipulation 101 kids know a lot about themselves they know who they are by how they feel inside this is your identity who you feel like inside who you know yourself to be this can also change as you grow up or change from day to day your gender your, from day to day your gender is just one part of your identity what makes you you Your gender is just one part of it. It can change day to day. Um, Some people say there are only two. There are only two genders, but there are really many genders. I am a girl. I am a boy. 
both, neither, just me, I'm just my own gender. So this is just complete nihilistic, individualized worship of yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, it goes on and on. Um, and then they get the actual like gender ideology terms. For some people, the grown-ups guess right about their body and their gender. This is called cisgender. No. That's called biological norms. <laughs> now, where does the word cisgender come from? Oh, cis is um, actually, this is, this is a linguistic manipulation. Okay, so cis, if I'm not mistaken, is a biological term. Oh. Where um, there are uh, deviations between chromosomes, and I could be wrong about this. The etymology, sorry, of the word of the term cis is about like a biological fissure in our cells. Okay, um, and that's like a hard reality. But then these linguistic, these linguistics. Um, these language people, they come in and they manipulate it. And that's what queer theory, uh, Marxism, is always about a manipulation of words. And mm. words are truth. Christian logos, like if the term, the, you know the logos? Yes, you know this term? yes. It has to be that, that words reflect truth, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're a Christian, that's Christ is God and creator of all and, and, and savior of all. Yeah. Um, uh, or Christ represents God, whatever you, whatever, whatever your delineation. I, I think it's like of, uh, of word thing. is God, and what they're trying to do is destroying all the words. And exactly, and the Gnostics, the Marxists, even people as far back as uh, as Plato, unfortunately, mm -hmm. have been manipulating language to invert it, engineer society for their own gains. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people have been doing that. Nazis did it. Uh, I mean, I could, every totalitarian government and every ruler has who didn't want any accountability has manipulated language with lies. Because it's easier. Yes. To go through a legislation, you need to vote on it, there, there's got to be people. Why don't we just change the meaning of the words? There you go. And then, and, and then the law makes sense to my and advantage. That's, that's what they're doing with the Constitution. Yes. Uh -huh. Article 1, Section 1 says that everybody has a right to protect their privacy. And they're just saying, yeah, that applies to children too. Yeah. Which they're going out on a huge limb here because the case law has been established in this country and this state that, that the, the child is the dependent of the parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the parent is the has the legal responsibility to... Be informed about the child to give consent for the child. Yeah. They're going to lose this. Mm. Millions of kids will suffer from it in the meantime. It's got to get to the Supreme Court. Maybe not millions of kids, maybe just thousands. But regardless, this is unacceptable. But millions of dollars will certainly be spent <laughs> yes. on this. And it's got, it, it has to go to the Supreme Court. And California is just... And other, other, other really um, hard left states are... Just running with this right now and there are all these legislations going through for educational um, law and uh, parental rights laws um, that are really going to cause problems you guys need to follow california bills that are going through so 1078 will force this curriculum in all local schools oh, yeah we did report they uh, have to they have to teach this stuff yeah and they can't criticize it authoritarianism 101. That is a Newsom's little red book. Yeah. Like from Mao. Mouse. Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone has to memorize that yeah. at that yeah. time. Like, and I, I would say the little red book today is Paulo Freire, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. That book is the little red book. I mean, that's so sad to see uh, those kind of books in elementary school. How do we know, like, that book is only in Glendale Unified District or also in other districts. Oh, it's in other districts. Like I said, it was donated by this group, Gender Nation. This is a national organization yeah. that works through teachers' unions to get these books into the hands of local districts of schools in so, your neighborhood. So, so in like St. Gabriel, Temple yeah. City, all the children are learning this? Oh, correct. I mean, uh, see, this is the problem. They, they're very subtle. Uh -huh. They hide behind the FAIR Act. If you guys are familiar with the FAIR Act, it requires all K through 12 institutions to represent homosexuals and trans and bisexuals and yeah, non-binary, right. all the all the LGBTQ. Um, it, it forces schools to at least cover it. 
mm-hmm. to a yeah. certain extent. Yes. So they say, oh, yeah, we're just, we're just living under the FAIR Act. We're just abiding by the FAIR Act, which is not true. They're choosing their method mm. of living up to the FAIR Act. I don't really have a problem with the FAIR Act. Um, what I have a problem with is their abuse of it, yeah. similar to the Constitution. Yeah. I want to protect the rights of privacy of all individuals, mm-hmm. obviously. But I don't want that to be at the expense of the rights to privacy of the parents mm-hmm. involving their children. I don't care if a public school institution gives a nuanced, uh, non-biased interpretation of homosexuality in the LGBTQIA plus community in public schools. I don't care that that happens. I think that's actually fine. But it has to be non-biased. Mm-hmm. And to be non-biased, you have to literally say, this is what LGBTQ ideology is. Do you guys know about critical race theory? Yeah. yeah. So critical race theory from the get-go was quoting Paulo Freire again mm-hmm. in, the, in one of the first books ever written from the first critical race theorists. They quote Paulo Freire, and I should actually pull up the quote. It's pretty good. And my whole point in saying this is that I don't think critical race theory should even be out of the schools. Okay. I want, I want kids to know that, yes, this is a offshoot of Marxism. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are politicizing races. Yes, they're trying to divide you. Yes. I want the government to say that. Yeah. I would love for teachers to be like, if, if someone tries to apply this, they're trying to manipulate you. That would be great education. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how America used to teach about communism. That, that's what we're supposed to do, but we're not exactly. doing it. Now we're like worshiping it. So did they teach you the communism when you were in school? Uh, me? When I was in Taiwan? Uh, Not in Taiwan, here. Here? Mm-hmm. They didn't teach me anything. In, oh, really? Yeah, in, in, <laughs> like, I came here when I was in middle school. Uh-huh. And I didn't learn anything, and oh, okay. basically. I, yeah. Maybe because I was like, I was in those uh, English as second language. Oh, right. Thing, so the, the teacher just gave up on me. It was like, oh, oh really? You don't understand it anyway. Yeah, that's sad. That's so, very hard to hear. Yeah. And it, it wasn't until when I was in college, mm. I started to learn like part of government and then uh-huh. how, 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 how the, the states work. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I graduated and I read the Bible and I, I, I read about like everything I, I'm interested in there. So that's I think the, that's, unfortunately, that's a common thread for people school yeah. doesn't really teach them much and exactly. it exposes them to ideas but it ends up like just confusing yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you know it yeah. confused me yeah i became pretty hard left okay. in college because college students we we are they they are we, we were uh-huh. easily manipulated oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they focus on the youth yeah, for cause, a reason because we're like oh we, i know everything have you read this book <laughs> and, yeah and young people have a certain proclivity to want to burn it all down yeah oh yeah you know that's I mean, true that's, yes yeah, yeah. all so, the revolutionary are in their yeah. 20s <laughs> i think there's a i think there's a time for a revolution uh-huh. obviously there is we live in a revolutionary country yes right yeah but uh, against tyranny yes mm. yes indeed and if the government that was once against tyranny becomes tyrannical we yeah. have we have to work in every way legally possible to confront that and change it uh, before there actually is a revolution. And I don't want that. Nobody wants that because anybody who's lived through one knows how horrific it is. Uh, so that's why I'm running. Yes. I mean, if people, if people want change, you got to change. And it has to be you to do it. Yes. yes. There's no choice. Yeah. Here, I want to quote this. This is that Pauli Freire quote. So this is a book called Words That Wound. It's from 1991, I believe. Critical race theory was started in 1989 at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, which is actually where I got my master's. Um, And this book came out two years after that. And it says, Central to the methodology of critical race theory and liberationist pedagogy. Hmm. Pedagogy is how we teach things, Mm -hmm. right? is an ongoing engagement in political practice. The Brazilian educator and philosopher Paulo Freire has said that liberationist teaching contains two dimensions. Now, this is where it gets religious because this is like quoting the Bible where it Mm. talks about faith without works is dead. Anyway, 
This is Paulo Freire. It's quoting now. This is critical race theorists quoting Paulo Freire at the beginning of critical race theory. They're quoting an educational theorist. Mm -hmm. So it's not just in the law. It's always been about education. And it says, reflection and action. Faith without works is dead. Reflection and action in such a radical interaction that if one is sacrificed, even in part, the other immediately suffers. Meaning your Marxist theories have to be applied through action, through the schools. And if one is at all, if the theory is at all watered down or the action is at all watered down, the whole thing's falling apart. <laughs> so this is, this is idealism, mm. idealist Marxism to the core. Yes. And critical race theory was always that. I want that to be taught in public schools. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I want I want a te I want an adult to go in and say, yeah, this is this is Marxist ideology through critical race theory, and it's always been about education. Yeah. And I want I just want them to tell the truth. Mm. That's really what I want. Like I'm conservative, I'm politically conservative, but philosophically I'm liberal. Yeah. Where I want all free speech. I want all words to be on the table. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to be able to speak accurately or even inaccurately mm -hmm. uh, in order to get to truth. Okay. That is 100%. Mm -hmm. Truth is the most important part. Logos. Yeah. Yeah. Is the most important part. Mm -hmm. The only way to get there is to never stifle speech. Speech is by far the top inalienable right that I cherish. Everything is secondary to, spe to speech. Yeah. So... That's why I'm running for school board. You yeah, know, exactly. Essentially. Yeah. To get the truth out there. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yes. It's thank you, man. amazing. How can we help you? Because from I'm, I'm actually reading uh, Acts 22 right now. And then you standing up as an American and talk about your right to free speech and against this tyranny. It's like Paul when he, uh, when he, he was arrested. By the by, by, by the religious uh, mm -hmm. the, the temple, and he go like, I am a Roman citizen. Under the Roman law, you cannot uh, whip me and you cannot punish me like this. He has the right to do process and to do everything, and uh, I think that's what you're doing to yeah. run the school board and right. everything as an American fight for what's right. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, is there any uh, words you want to say to our audience and how can we help you for your campaign to run for a uh, Glendale school board? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, you, you can go and follow me on Instagram at Henry for Glendale, H-E-N-R-Y, number four, Glendale. My website is also Henry for And there is a link. First of all, follow me and engage with me. Send me a message. It'd be great. And then there's a link in my bio where you can donate to the campaign. Um, any amount is fantastic. They're going to spend $80,000. The union is going to spend 80 k on this, um, on this election, just for my election. There's another election, too, in, my, in Glendale, and they're going to spend another 80 on that. Maybe 50 I don't know. But they're going to definitely break triple digits on yeah. this. Mm -hmm. And we need to counter that. We, we need to fundraise, unfortunately. Uh, you need to tell everyone you know, share the links to help to help the campaign, and just give whatever you can. If you want to give your time during the election, that'd be great too. But I understand people are busy, and you know we we have the core group of volunteers that are going to turn out for the election. But we really just need to be able to fund um, mailers, text messaging, email distribution. All these things cost money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we need to pay people to make calls and to fundraise more. And it's, it's, it's a big, it's a big commitment to do this. And we just can't appreciate your help enough. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for coming. Thank and, you. uh, Jordan Henry for Glendale School Board. Sorry. My name is, uh, Ethan. And my name is Felicia. This is Jordan Henry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Felicia. Oh, see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.